Welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I'm your host, Ethan Tilner. I'm with my co-host, Elvin Mims. What's going on, E? Not that much, man. Chilling on this snowy day, feeling too casey. Ooh, yeah. feeling, <laughs> feeling real too casey right now. <laughs> Playing too much 2K. Oh, man. Um, it's episode 41. We are based out of London, Ontario, Canada. Figured I'd get that out of the way. It is cold out today. It's a cold Sunday. Ugh. Um, Okay. So, the Suns and the Lakers had a little scuffle. It was Friday night. It was between Tyler Eulis. It was between Contavious Colwell Pope. There were some things that happened. People are saying Lonzo Ball, because he didn't get involved, is kind of a bit of a... He's not a great teammate in this sense, I guess, is the way I can say it. But I'm not going to say it in a bad way. But what do you think, Elvin? uh, Let's say you're a veteran on the team. How do you approach him when you got to talk to him? All right, this is is how I see it right here. If he was on the bench and it happened, perfectly understandable. He walked right past it all. Like, literally walked past it. Like... And just looked. because just because you get in it to try if you look like you're trying to break it up, you're not finna get no you might get a tech, but it's not really finna be no crazy fine behind it. And who knows? You got a little out there. You got veterans on that team. They'll pay that fine for you. Or even the Lakers might. They they like, like your veterans will pay that fine for you. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they will. It's just like I told you, boy, you seen what's wrong like what's wrong with this game, you just seen it right there. <laughs> no heart, dude. It's no no heart at all. It's not just, like that's just the bottom line about it, man. Like Regardless, you're making X amount of million a year, so what? You get a few thousand dollar fine. You got to pay that. Okay, so be it. But if is it tax de- deductible? You, you know, but you're not bringing. I mean, if you're not bringing nothing on the court, like Jesus Christ, man, like let me know you, you still got my points. back somewhere. <laughs> you got my back somewhere, man. Like, and that's just from the that's not a, that's not I'm not gonna say from the outside looking in. That's just from as a man in that situation, being a professional player. Like, you can re- I can relate to that. Like, if you're not producing on the court. And then you see us in a, in a scuffle and every, like the team is in there. And you don't even come in to at least grab some, you know, just to at least split two people apart. You just literally walk past and walk over there by the coach. Like, I guess he felt like that was his chance to try to get at the end of the game or something. But I don't like, I just I don't agree with that at all. Like, people can say what they want to. Oh, uh, well, he didn't want to take the fine. He didn't do it. Like, that's minimal. Like, mm-hmm. that is minimal. You got um, Brooke Lopez. You got Lou Aldane. You got you got vets on your team. Well, you know what? Don't worry about the fine. I'll take care of for you. Like your man's um with the Cavs a couple of years back. Was it Dante Jones? Oh, and LeBron just was like, you know what? Don't worry oh, about it. I'll pay, I'll pay the fine for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just happens. But, yeah, Dante I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, what happened and what I've seen, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I don't agree with it at all. No, it's not. Like, I'm not asking start. him to go pick up a chair. Or a monitor yeah. off the score yeah. table and start swinging and trying to hit people, but do at least get in there like you're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to split. Just two hold people someone up and just say, all yeah, right, you know, spread out. You see one of their players running and kind of step in between yeah. him and the player. You don't have to move. actually get involved, exactly. just be there. You're on the court, right? So yeah. if he was on the bench, okay, I'd have been different like, okay, story. I understand, different story, right? Yeah. And it's, there's probably it's players like, on the bench are probably at first would be like, what the hell are you doing, man? Yeah. Get over there. But uh, anyways, anyways. If I'm the coach and it happens and he come walking over there like me, I'm be like, dude, why are you over here talking to me? Yeah. Like, get in there, like, stop. The worst is how with all the video they have out there now and how they have such clean quality video, they have, like, the obviously the little clip where it just shows him looking at it like, huh? Yeah, he looked huh. at it, wiped his face, and walked on huh. over by Luke Walker. Huh. Yeah, so. so you get to draw your own interpretations, and yeah. it's not been good so far. Yeah, <clears> my <throat> interpretation, he didn't want no part of what was going on. But. No part. And still finished, and still finished the night with a whopping two points, wasn't it? Like two or four points. It wasn't uh-huh. very, wasn't very clear. I don't know. I, I've been told. You know, by people that I'm gonna eat my words that he just on second half of the season he just gonna turn the switch on and just become rookie of the year candidate or uh-huh. something. <laughs> I'm just not seeing it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Ben Simmons to lose at this point. And speaking of Ben Simmons, did you watch the other night there the uh, Golden State Warriors Sixers game? Yeah, I was you know, trying <clears> to get <throat> on it a little bit, man. Like that dude was solid, and he was giving them fits because. You know, it's um they had him and you know you got Reddick and Coverton at that one, two, and three spot. Like, so either way it go, you can't hide. Like they can't really hide Steph Curry, you know, mm-hmm. on defense because he either got to guard Coverton 
or he got to go at J.J. Reddick and come off 100 screens, yep. or he got to go at Ben Simmons <laughs> and try to man up. And it was like you could see it. Like he was – they was going to the bench to people I haven't even seen. I didn't even know they was on the Warriors team. <laughs> and they was coming out there still getting cooked. So, I was like, he had like 18 points, like nine assists or something at the half, though. So they moved like, the ball well, those two. It's pretty oh, yeah. scary watching Embiid and, they and young, Simmons. And they're young, too, right? So – as I much think. as I was skeptical about all the money they're signing him to, so far he's doing a great job. So far. But it's just. I mean, but anybody, yeah. it, I don't think being skeptical is anything out of the norm when you got somebody who's played 30 some games over, you know, being drafted in 2013 exactly. and only played like 30 some exactly. games up until like yeah, up to he, last year. So, I mean, people be like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody in their right mind. I think everybody was skeptical of him and his parents. I think everybody else was exactly, just skeptical. Exactly. Because, like. like even if you're getting sold like, oh, he's going to be the next Tim Duncan. And let's say he does turn out to be Tim Duncan yeah. and he wins the Sixers five championships because that's what Tim Duncan did for the Spurs. Uh, okay, I'll eat my words there. But at the same time, even in the beginning, that's still a very hard sell. And you can, it's easy to go back and go, oh, it was hard because it was, it was a hard sell to get. But I don't know. I'd just like to see him prove it. But anyways, they're doing it well. They didn't win. They lost 124-116, like I said. They had 77 to 52 in the first half of the Sixers. They were rolling there. Yeah. And then you had Golden State. I mean, sorry, the Sixers had 47 points in the first quarter on them, on the Warriors. And then Golden State was like, you know what we're going to do in the third quarter? We're just going to get 47 points right back. Do it but quick, do it. But I, I don't care what nobody <laughs> say, man. Like, it always boils down to stops. You know, like, yeah. they, they didn't really – the Golden State didn't really have no – they didn't get stops and the Sixers did, right? So – that was the tail of two halves. Like, literally. literally like, the tail of two halves. Because in that fourth quarter, they scored them by, like, 30 <laughs> points, right? I think it was, like, 47 to 16 or something like that in, in scoring. And it was Jesus. just, like, it was crazy, man. But, yeah, you got to have that defense, man. Yeah, they can turn on way too quick. It's a yeah. microwave. Yeah, because defense, it gives you a chance for your offense to start cooking, right? Like, if you're coming down and you're not stopping nobody and you're not hitting anything. And then if you you know, if you <laughs> you get know a turnover I mean? and you pull a Kyle Lowry and you throw your hands up and Steph Curry's halfway down ready to shoot a three right yeah. over half, you're or done. Or somebody have to commit and Clay Thompson over. Or somebody have to commit and KD is open. Or Draymond Green gets it on the float through <sighs> and he's many. penetrating to make something happen. It's, it's too just, many options. Yeah, but. Yeah, man. Anyways. Oh, hi, Charlie, I know. Um, speaking of turning it on real quick and making it last, that's what she said. Anyways, the Celtics won their 15th straight game. How is that? How they, do, is that hey, they on a mission, man. They're like, working as one I, unit. Remember what, what I told you when um, – you remember when the Raptors played the Bucks, mm -hmm. And I was like, the reason they're struggling with them is why. I was like, those young dudes got confidence. Yep. When a team get that confidence, man, like it is hard. And they're not – I mean, they were playing against them. They're hard Now you wins. got a team with, like, talent. You got Al Horford. You got um, Kyrie Irving. You know, Jalen Brown and the rookie Tatum stepping up big. You know what I'm saying? Like, these guys have, like, confidence with – you know what I'm saying? With their determination, man. And it was like – It's turning out to, like, and it's – like, people can say what they want to. But, dude, you don't – in any kind of professional league, at first. in any kind of professional league, you don't win 15 games in a row off of just a fluke. Mm -mm. It, you don't fluke league. No, I was thinking to myself, like well, if they get if they, I thought they were going to get five at first. I'm like, well, if they get five, when you know, they, I don't know, that's kind of tough to gauge. But when they lost Gordon Hayward, I'm not going to lie, I was like, oh damn, no, that's a huge, right. still a huge loss. You, you went by yourself. It was a lot of people because I was the same way. And if if somebody was to say, I think I thought anybody, they're going to be fourth in any, the East. Anybody outside of a diehard Celtic fan. And somebody within that organization sit here and tell me, well, I knew they still was going to do this without Gordon Haywood. They'd be telling a lie. Like, That's period. Tough. Like, you you know they, they – I mean, it's the NBA, so they're going to be tough. And then in the East, they're going to compete. But I just I thought they were going to be like, fourth, yeah. Yeah, but the, and who was going to be third? Uh, the and, Wizards. And who was going to be second? The Raptors. Oh, man, get out of here. Well, <laughs> I see the tables have turned because I think the Raptors is holding that fourth spot down right now. <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah, no, but that, we'll get that, to them in a sec. Don't you worry about yeah, that hell. The Raptors are holding that four spot down. And if they have to play a team like Charlotte, if it was the playoffs, they done. Kimber Walker, is a, he on a cooking mission. Oh, Chef gosh, Walker, that's I'm what I'm calling Oh, no, he's Kimber Walker. Ooh, yeah. ooh, look out for Kimber Walker. Ooh, and Dwight Howard's back's good all of a sudden. Get out of here. Yeah. But to be honest, when the Celtics won their 15th straight win against the Atlanta Hawks, 
Um, Kyrie Irving had 30. Jalen Brown had a career high 27. That's, that's not bad. That's uh, that's not good. For, that's not bad for the second year uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. No, Jalen Brown. But he's been consistent with him though. Like throughout this run, he's been very consistent. That's why I say him and Tatum been very consistent. People were a little skeptic when they drafted him, kind of going, "Huh? Who? Yeah. No agent, no all that stuff." Didn't there. really play too much his first year, but I think that was all part of the plan by design. I mean, he just needed to develop. At, but I mean, but you look at the team they had too, right? You had Thomas, you had Bradley, you had Crowder. Bradley, yeah. Jake had, Crowder, good spot. Yeah, you had like all of them. And then coming off the bench, well, Lennox was like their first option off the bench. So you Marcus know Smart, so, too. Yeah, Marcus yeah. Smart. So, I mean, his menace was like that. But I tell you what, he won't have no problems now because when they mm-hmm. called on him, he is delivering, man. <laughs> so my question to you next is, Elvin, What's up? how many wins again are they going to get to before they lose again? Wow, that's tough, man. I have their next five games ready for you if you're interested up till December 2nd. I mean, you can't even say because they don't beat everybody. Pretty it's much. up till like, December they, 2nd, you know Elvin. They don't beat pretty much everybody. Okay, here's where I'm going. Here's where, okay, we got Dallas is the next game coming up. When? I don't know. I just I have all the games up till December 2nd. You know what? Will you just let me Dude, finish that's here? a long time, man. You're going to call out 60 games right now. <laughs> oh, my God. This is five <laughs> games, and, yeah, I gave you a time frame till where it's ending. <laughs> You son of a <laughs> So they have Dallas next. Mm-hmm. They're playing the Orlando Magic after that. The game after that, they're playing the Pacers, then the Pistons, and then the Suns. I say they beat the Mavericks. They meet, They beat the Magic. They're going to lose against the Pacers. No, I don't see them losing against the Pacers. They'll beat Dallas. They'll beat the Mavericks. I mean, they'll beat Dallas. They'll beat Orlando. They'll beat Indiana, too. I think they'll get Indiana. Yeah, that's just... That's, you you asked me what I thought. You, you didn't ask me to agree with I just me. said, no, it's not undermining. It's my opinion. <laughs> like then that. who are they going to lose to again? The Pistons, you think? That'll be a good one for them. That's going to be a good one for them. The why, aren't the, why aren't the Pacers a good one? Why would the Pacers be a good because one? Because you got Vince Girl. He's playing well. You got okay. Thaddeus Young at the power forward position. Miles Turner. Man, get out of here. Dude, stop it, man. We just called out a legit four people putting in work for the for the Celtics, and now you finna call out all Thaddeus Young because he's a power forward, and um Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo, Darren yeah, Collison. Man. Man, listen, man, like seriously, man. Come on, that's too easy. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. If it wasn't so many people, with, guys. If it wasn't so many people witnessing this right now, and due to professionalism, man, we might move some furniture in here, but. Um, nah, and listen to this. All the depots, all the depots playing well. Yeah, he is playing well. I'm not gonna take that from him, but he ain't finna. T- you know, I don't think he's finna carry his team past a, a hot Celtic team. Like, <laughs> come, on. <laughs> come on, man. Let's. Well, you know what I'm saying is the pace yourself. Isn't? Okay. We might need to pull a little something. Well, on what it. you want to put on? Uh, all right, uh, then. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll figure okay. it out at the end of this show. All right. Anyways, um, those were the games up until December second, Elvin. In case you were wondering. Anyways. So I was reading an article on the score. And the article involved the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets are 9-6. and six, And it said they're fool's gold. And I'm trying to understand why they're fool's gold. Who? What's that again? The Denver Nuggets. And like, here's, where I, here's where I'm confused. They haven't made the playoffs since 2012-2013. And they're poised to make a playoff push right now. They're 6th in the East. I say they're going to stay around there. They're going to be 6th, 7th, or 8th, give or take. Either way, I think they're going to get in. Saying they're fool's gold, and I don't understand what that means. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2012, 2013. That's like almost five years. That's a long time. I mean, getting to the playoffs, I feel like, is one of the building blocks towards building a championship. They got Paul Millsap. He's a legit threat. You got Will Barton. You love him. You're, you love Will Barton. Ah. Never yeah, mind. Right. Emmanuel Moutier. He's pretty cool. All right. You're a hard seller. All right. No, I'm going to tell you, though. I'm going to tell you. What about like, Nikola Jokic? He's I like a- well, Jokic. Yeah, they got Paul Mills out. But this is the thing about it. The one the one player that I said, oh, this is who the Raps need to go after. Jamal Murray. Nope. Wilson Chandler. Yeah, well, Wilson Chandler. Yeah, no, That's yeah, what yeah, I've been yeah, saying yeah, that the yeah. Raptors should have went up. Will Barton, like, too, would have been Chandler. nice. Yeah, but Will Wilson Barton. Chandler would have hit. Like, either him, like he would have filled that three spot. Nice for him. Kenneth man. Fareed. Kenneth Fareed, yeah. They all don't think. I don't, let me tell you what it is, though. They're they, a playoff team. They're they just in the West. 
they in the West where you got Houston, you got OKC, you got well the hype was where you got Portland, you got Golden State. Dude, like, when you got them teams right there and then on top of all the hype behind the Lakers and the Clippers started out hot and stuff like that, dude, a team like that will fall because they're a small market, right? They're not really a big market team. That's true. So, they are, they, they, they kind of they fall kind of to, you know, ain't nobody really talking about the mile high city that much, right? They don't really have no superstars. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a they don't have a James Harden or Westbrook or Steph Curry and KD. They don't have, you know what I'm saying, like, guys, they don't have a LaMarcus Aldridge or a Kawhi Leonard. They just have they got like, Nikola Jokic. Do, like, do you the understand? Joker. He's just not. He's what it is over the past like the Joker. year. Though what happened over the past year or so is he established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the league. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can't take a guy who they just said, okay, well, he just started killing last year, so you know, let's just just he's going to take that team there. You get what I'm saying? Like, it ain't but one person that I seen that happen, and I mean, it's been just like on an incline since he got in the league, and that was um that was Giannis. Like, that's the only one, you know. Mm. But other than that, Yoke is like, I'm not taking nothing from him, but it was just like last year he hit him and he hit the league hard. Like, But you you feel that the team they have warrants a playoff team, though, right? They'll be a playoff team. So that's not fool's but it's, gold, it's right? Not, no, I don't think that's fool's, fool's gold. Because fool's gold means you're not going to make it to the playoffs, in no, my opinion. It just, it just looked like, no, I think what happened is, like, I think what a lot of people, when they say fool's gold, is for people to think that they're going to literally contend with those top four and five teams. Oh, they're not going to be a championship You know, team, like, no. that's what it is. Like, if they go, when they go up against, like. They'd have know, to have a serious run and some yeah, different like, things go gonna, their way. Yeah, yeah, but it's just, I think that's their downfall, is that they don't have. A legit guy, a true. legit, like, one or two superstars on their team, you know. You know, that's what it then until then, they're in their smaller market, people won't really notice that team, right? Because you think about it, Denver, only really glory thing was when they won that playoff series and Matumbo land on the floor holding the ball up kind of thing, you know. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like, you know, they've been. Melo took them to the Western Conference Finals, didn't he? Yeah, I don't think they went to the Western Conference Finals. I have to look that up. But um, I'm just saying in general, like they just that's the only downfall. Like their play, they got a bunch of they got like a younger team. They got guys that's hungry. If you take the Denver team and put them in the East, and they're like one of the most talked about teams in the league, true, by far, true. by far. It's just where they they just happen to be a good team. That's why when I see them beating people, I don't even be surprised. I'd be like, dude, like that's a legit team. Just because you turn on Sports Center or PTI and all these shows and they're not talking about the Nuggets, don't mean that they're not like a relevant team. That doesn't mean that they're not a team that can come in and, and do damage, right? Well, so, one of the things they said was they're not winning very much on the road, but they're winning a lot at home. But isn't that kind of the story of home court advantage? Don't you tend yeah, to win more than you, t- you do? No, not really. In a professional locker room, they say, you know what, we got to take care of home. But you let's really want to go 50 50, eh? Let's go. No, nah, you want to, like, you literally want to try to win about 70% of your home games and then go out and, like, steal a few games on the road. You Meaning, like, yeah, your, your away record, you want to keep 50, 500%, nah, right? If you're, if you're, even if it's a little under 500%. If you're on a, let's say you're on a six game road trip, if you come back at 500, that's considered a good road trip. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, but at home, if you're on a six-game homestand and you mess around and go four and two, they like, you know, that was a kind of shaky homestand. You, get you better go like, at least four and two, yeah. Yeah, like you know anything less than that, they like, uh, you can't go fifty percent at home. Like mm-hmm. ideally, I'm telling mm-hmm. you from like years and years of experience of that, that's what it is. Let's Those take are your care. opportunities. Let's to take win. care of home and let's go out on the road and steal a couple. You know what I'm saying? Let's go out. You know, we're gonna have some that we shouldn't win, but we got to find some kind of way to grit it out. Like that's what you try to do. Mm-hmm. Um. I was yeah, I don't know. I just I saw that and I was like, Denver's got a solid squad put together. They can they could put something interesting. I think at best, I think a, their version of a championship would be more like them getting to the second round. But either yeah. way, I could see them maybe making a solid push in the in the first round of the playoffs. And yeah, the, like I said, the the score was saying fool's gold because they weren't they're not winning very much at home. It's still very early sample size too. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Elvin, <laughs> you know who won today? Who won? Man? Your favorite team played. Yeah, who did they play? The Raptors played the Wizards. Yeah, they won. Yeah, they yeah. won. What was the score? It was one hundred to ninety-one. We all get our free slice of pizza. Oh yeah, that's that's the only reason y'all excited. That's free because y'all get a free slice of pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, come on. DeRozan had 33 points, 8 boards, 6 assists. Yeah. Like, Todd had a good game, yeah, too, though. I say, like, what, I remember, I, like, I honestly remember saying uh, right before last season, and I was like, you know, I don't think DeRozan is like a guy you can build a team around. And, like, I literally come back and say, no, nah, like, I stand corrected with that. Like, mm. I, I just don't, I don't, like, I'll take that one back. Like, he literally, especially after watching him, the way he started last year and then, you know, just continue just being consistent with it, man. Like, you know, that dude Does he work. need a three-point shot? No, I think he needs a three-point shooter. Or does he, okay, I guess I can rephrase that. Does he need to be kind of like how Kobe Bryant wasn't the greatest three-point shooter, but if. You he needed him run. to knock him down. He could still knock him down. Yeah, right but I think with I think with Kobe's game, it was a little more. Like the Rosen game is like his kind of range game is crazy. Like his footwork is crazy. I just like that's what he made his name off of. I think coming into the league, Kobe always had that, you know, that pull up three game and all that stuff, you know. But DeRozan, like he was always that athletic one that's gonna like either knife through and finish, you know, because he. One thing about DeRozan. Like you say, Kobe, you know, they both had the mid-range, right? But on the, plus, on the plus side, Kobe had the three-point shot. DeRozan don't have one. But Still then athletic. DeRozan has the ability to go in and get you, you know, he come out of a game with 15, 16 trips to the free-throw line. Well, you never really saw that much out of Kobe because his footwork and stuff was so good that he could just create that space, right? But DeRozan was a lot good. And that's like a talent, dude. Like, people don't understand. Like, with him and James Harden, like, getting to the line that much, like, it's nothing easy at all, man. They like body control and stuff. So, I don't think he need to get a three-point shot. I just think he need they need to get him a legit three-point shooter out there that he can True. kick the ball to. And it will keep everything opened up for him, you know, because I'm worried about if he get a three-point shot with, he start just solely relying on that. And Turns it, it into Terrence Ross. Away, yeah, and it takes away from his, his mid-range game and his, you know, that stuff. So. That was a big disappointment, Terrence Ross, G. But anyways, I'd have took him over Kyle Lowry, though. Oh gosh, you always say this. You dude, always no, that's the truth, man. I'm sorry. Dude. Like, I, it's, it's, it's nothing personal. So you turn Terrence Ross into a point guard? Interesting. No, I like I'll that. keep him and still go ahead and get me Rondo or somebody. Oh, that would be kind of cool though, actually. Like, yeah, dude, Terrence like, Ross is a point guard. Like I'm just saying, man. Like nothing personal, but dude, I just I'm not a fan of Kyle Lowry. I'm pretty sure we all know that by now. Yeah, you really do. Like, we all like know him. that by now, man. One of the positive notes, though, you see how Pascal Siakam has been playing? Yeah, yeah. He's been stepping up. Yeah, that's he's crazy, been... huh? Dude comes in his second year, and he's putting in work. Where's Bruno Caboclo this playing is, for Oh, <laughs> yes, I know. But this is where and I, you can always look at the ugly side of the 905 or the D-League adjustments. But this is where the Raptors, in a positive note, can see how him and Pirtle have developed in a very short period of time. Yeah. And at the same time, so, go, what the hell is going on with Bruno? Bruno say, you know what? I'm just happy to be here. You know, like I compete with myself. You no, know, that's 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 um that's the other guy, Nagara. I compete with nobody. I compete with myself. Oh right? my god! Yeah, yeah, you were you were going on that. <laughs> um, but anyways, their bench is very solid. So solid, actually. ESPN has them ranked in, ranked in the top five. Yeah, well, I mean, do it like they do have a nice bench. They you have Yakum Porter, but you DeLon have, Wright going down, I think that might what happened affect to him, it. No? Separated his shoulder, if Again, I remember correctly. He just had, he just came when he came back. It was for a shoulder. I'm pretty sure he just re-injured himself. Wow. But I mean, they still got. I'm gonna tell you another guy that Van Van Vliet. He's solid. Yeah, he's, he's very solid. solid. And um, that uh, the the one rookie. That they got a nog by yeah, OG a nog by yeah, he he's a solid, in. he just knows what he's doing. He he's a defensive it. first guy, I like yeah, that a lot so, too. Yeah. I remember when I was at work, people were saying, Oh, I don't know about this guy, and I didn't do much research on the draft. Yeah. But when the Raptors drafted him, I re I watched some clips on him, I did my little research then. What I found was he was a very solid defensive guy because in college he had 1.2 steals and 1.2 blocks. So he was pretty even there. So that was what you want. And he played the small forward position in college. Yeah. So that was what impressed me a lot. His shooting isn't to be desired yet, but that's not what's important. We've always said this. When you're going to come into the Raptors and join them, especially when you're a late first-round pick, your main focal point is going to be playing defense because DeRozan is the guy who gets you buckets. You're paying Lowry to get you buckets. You're paying a bucket to do both for you to play defense and get you buckets. If you're an Ogby, you just need to focus on keep doing what you're doing. Him Pat, him, and Pascal just need to come in and kill it. And if they keep doing what they're doing, they're going to get good paychecks yeah, one day. No, they do that and then put that work in in the off season. That's and, when you do it, yeah. And they, but honestly, man, they do, man. They need to make it mandatory in the league for all players to turn in. Like, 
50 hours of workout footage, man. And then we'll find out if Robeson is legit working out. You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> like, is very like, interesting, dude, like, Alvin. I mean, you, they post so much stuff on social media. Do you think media, players like, have kind of agreements like that? No, or no? no, man, that's too much. Like, like, you want me to record me working out for two hours a day for X amount of days? That was just me being a little... That was just me being on. We're gonna pay you two hundred twenty-five million dollars, though. Yeah, but it's just like, nah. I mean, when you paying a guy two hundred twenty-five million, you ain't paying him that because you're worried about his work ethic. Yeah, true. You get what I'm saying? I think at that point, that that was just me messing around, man. You know, taking a shot at rolling. Careful of it. I'm I'm a gullible bull sometimes. Yeah, man. But yeah, that's probably that's why it's good. You don't own an NBA team. I would be the best owner no, ever. Man, you'll be the owner, the GM. I would be the, the best owner you'll ever. You'll be the owner, the GM, the coach, the power forward, and the point guard. Because it's like when nobody be the <laughs> I'm like, ball's going through me. Hey. Cycle through, hey. cycle through. Hey. Niggas will have a t- they will have a telethon on TV. Like, anybody want to come play for Ethan's team? <laughs> Call us at 1 800. See, the ticket holder? 1 800. Poor Just bought Ethan. Tickets. <laughs> <laughs> poor Ethan. Jesus. Oh, He'd be man. like, poor Ethan. He's so rich because he's got the best team ever. No, that'd be like he's so rich because his uh, his, his <laughs> right about now his payroll is like is two point six million. <laughs> he so got one guy. He got it was paid, he done brought Matombo out of retirement, done signed in the five hundred thousand Luis Jesus Stola. Christ. No, I wouldn't do those adjustments. <laughs> he don't want to ask the job. I would be strict. Dog. <laughs> he don't want to ask JYD if he want to suit it back up again. Like, <laughs> no shot of calling the mugs. I'm like, don't make me call the dogs. <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to do the dog call. Oh, I'd be like, man. Don't make me call the dogs. Wow. I'd be like, rar, 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 rar. And then he'd be like, All right, I'm in and I'm like, Got yeah. him. No, I would be a very strict owner, Elvin. I'd be like, Oh really? You wanna screw around, do you? Yeah, I'd start sending you pamphlets to like Sacramento or Atlanta and be like, Oh, Atlanta's looking pretty crappy this time of year. How many games did they win in Dallas? Oh, go deal with Mark Cuban. Yeah. Peace. No, that anyways. That's rather here or there. It's back to my point, Elvin. I did a lot of research on this one. Raptors have a top five bench. They're behind the Spurs, the Celtics, the Rockets, and the Warriors. Yeah, you think that's fair? Yeah, I mean, uh, but that's big for you winning. Like that's big, especially in your. You know. I don't think that's ever been mentioned for our organization. To be honest, that's big praise. Even when we went to the Eastern Conference Finals, we weren't really praised on our bench. It was more of our reliance on the starters yeah the spurs rudy gay is just doing too well same with danny green you just know he's a professional the celtics they just you can put anyone anywhere yeah. jason tatum's just doing amazing for him the rockets yeah they got eric gordon doing lots of work for him he's going in starting for chris paul he's not starting for chris paul now mm-hmm. yeah they're doing all kinds of stuff in houston it's pretty impressive and the warriors obviously and you got sean livingston just killing it obviously yeah, he's doing so good we're big fans of his um mm-hmm. yeah i just <sighs> i was hoping you'd say they should be higher but anyways whatever Aww. what can i do what can i do Anyways, all right, all right, all right. Elvin. Yeah, what's up? It's time for cut trade and extend. Okay. So we're going to do a little rookie one. And for some people, they might be upset because Lonzo Ball is not in this. Uh, he couldn't be, man. He's not in this no. <laughs> cut trade and extend. But <laughs> Lonzo. The Lonzo. Anyways. So we got De'Aaron Fox, Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell, and Dennis Smith Jr. First, we're going to go with De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox in the season is averaging 11 points per game. He's averaging five assists per game, and he's averaging three rebounds with a steal. And he's shooting 22% from three. That's not the greatest. And he's shooting 40% from the field. That's okay. That's not bad. It could be. A little bit better. Donovan Mitchell. All right, let's see how Donovan Mitchell is doing. Oh, wait, no. We're going to go Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. for the Dallas Mavericks. Dennis Smith Jr. has got a higher points per game average of 14.5. 4.5 assists. 4.2 rebounds. 30% from three. And he's 40% from the field as well. So we got a better numbers there. Donovan Mitchell plays for the Utah Jazz. Um... One sec, one sec. We got Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell. Um, okay, so he's at 14.8 points per game. 2.8 assists, 3.1 rebounds. 
He's 38% from the field, so that needs to kind of tighten up a little bit, but he's the best shooter from three at 34%. And they're all similar in age. They're all around 20, 21, mm-hmm. 22. So, yeah, cut, trade, and extend. Yeah. Um, Can't put Lonzo in there because obviously we just cut him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I, just based off of, if I'm going off of numbers, I might have to cut De'Aaron Fox. Um, I trade Donovan Mitchell and I extend Dennis Smith Jr. What about your potential or your eye test? Um, I'm liking. I like the aggression of Dennis Smith Jr. and Donovan Mitchell. So you still keep it the same? Yeah, but I just still keep it the same. Um, I don't want to do Ben Smith. By the way, people are saying, "Why didn't you do Ben?" I wanted to try and do. Ben Simmons. Oh, Sorry, man. I'm Ben like, Smith. Like ben Smith. Like, <laughs> ben this is a mystery guy. He the guy. He the guy that's on 2K with the question mark, the dark picture with the question mark. <laughs> Who is this guy? The unlockable character. Oh, ben Smith, um, no, I didn't do Ben Simmons because uh, I think it's his rookie of the year to lose. I would just like to pick three guys that I felt are going to be in the running for it, and I think potentially second, fighting for second place. But anyways. So De'Aaron Fox, he gets the cat, unfortunately. And you said you're going to extend Donovan Mitchell? No, I'm going to extend Dennis Smith. Dennis, you've been a big fan of his since yeah, the season I started. Him, like, I've, you I've, love his yeah. aggression. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyways, the London Lightning, Elvin. Mm-hmm. They lost their first game. I was watching it against... Um, Oh, Jesus, they're playing against the Niagara River Lions, Ellen. Yeah. They lost against the Niagara River Lions 120 to 114. The River Lions were up by almost 20 points at one point, weren't they? Yeah. I just didn't see the first half. I watched all the second half. The Lightning had a very aggressive third and fourth quarter. Honestly, what killed them, and I, from you watching it too, you probably knew this too, Elvin, is they, the Lightning, when I say they, the Lightning um, missed five free throws in the final two minutes of the game. Lost six. And they lost by six, right there. Yeah, exactly. They lost by six. Exactly. Yeah, but That's the thing just, about it, yeah. like, yeah, but the thing about it, man, is that, I mean, they're, they're a championship team, a proven championship team. You know, a new coach, new system, things like that. Take some, you know, you got. I've seen a couple guys playing positions that didn't really see them playing last year. They still got the point guard that Junior Cadu can do, who is not in. He's you know, he's like yeah. that floor general. So you've seen a lot of like the Marcus Capers, Joe Freeze, and them running the point. You see Garrett Ryan running the point sometimes, right? Um, but, you know, having said that, like, they're all professionals and they know with what they did last year. It is a big target on their back. They're yep. the team to beat. So yep. what's going to happen is and every beating. night, every night, they're going to get, like, every team has got that game circle. They're going to get every team's best shot. Everyone was hyping up them beating the 905, right? Yeah, so it's like, that's what's going to happen. I mean, but, I, you know, I don't, you know, maybe sometimes stuff like that has to happen. You know, it's you, humbling. You come, you come in still riding that high or whatnot. And I know they're professionals, but we're all people too, right? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. guilty of it as well. You come in, you know, you don't dominate it the last year. You come in, you're still on that that high you know because you really have been off the court you know what I'm saying you're just energetic but you're still on that high they technically played year. in March you know so it's like you know that's just what it is but you now they'll be okay I don't think it's to say okay well oh, they better they, they should start worrying like you know it's the first game so no and it's high praise for the River Lions like you said they marked their calendar they knew they had to show up today they very they did a very good job of maintaining and eliminating their mistakes they had a good job. I'm sorry if I don't remember any of the players' names. I'm going to try and remember more as I go. I just didn't uh, have a – I was just more impressed with the way the play was. Anyways, the River Lions, though, what I was very impressed with, they protected the ball. They were a little shaky near the end, but you got to give hats off to the London Lightning because you know what made me laugh, Elvin? They were doing a full-court press, and it almost worked, but it ended up biting them in the butt. But I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Um, I, can, I like, dude. I cannot stress enough in a professional game. You can show and have a. You can show and get back. You got to recover fast, don't nah, you? But you can't try to hold a press, dude. Not in a professional game. No, because it, it like, almost worked. It almost did. It almost yes, but almost don't count. I know. You know, like it almost worked until somebody figured out. Yo, I'll get the ball here and we break it. Right? And someone just came through the middle and just zipped it to the and, middle and, and, and bam right to a corner and, and you're yeah, done. So it's there. like. 
you know, if and the guy like, in the middle just goes I, right yeah, to the middle. Professionally, then, yeah. you know what you cannot. You you absolutely cannot. You can show it to try to slow the ball up a little bit and then get back into. Your like man. we said, the last one, it's more of a one person press to eliminate yeah. seconds off yeah, the man, clock. You can you can probably have a couple people at half court, you know, saying you know what once meeting their guys. Yeah, once the point guard get, we want you to be here at half court. So if, when somebody try to pop up to get the ball, you can you can defend them here. We want to make them put the ball in the point guard hand. Therefore, we can let our guard make him zigzag up the court and mm-hmm. use a little time. Not we're finna try to get a steal. Like, this ain't like college, dude. Like, we finna try to get a steal mm-hmm. because all five people have a basketball IQ. Some higher than others, but nonetheless a basketball IQ. Yep. So, you don't have five people out there that's going to panic when they see a little pressure. They're just going to stand back and they're going to pick it apart. Yeah, it can look good if you don't know what you're looking at. You can say, you know what, we almost had that right there. Let's do it again. Uh, we mm-hmm. almost had it mm-hmm. here. Let's do mm-hmm. it again. Before mm-hmm. you realize they don't run off six or eight points. The reason why it's almost working is because they're figuring it out and it's not yeah, almost working. Yeah, they or might, they might honestly be baiting you to it. It's, That's it's, the other yeah. thing. They want you to do it like, so they, they want can you keep to breaking it. Like, yeah. yeah, so you can keep breaking it. But I've never been a fan of, like, you know, pressing. Yeah, no, it works in high school. High school, it works very well. You'll have all kinds of shocky stuff. But even then, like you said, Alvin, good teams figure it out very good. Like and them. the only way to win is straight up, honest, man-to-man but, defense. It's the only way to but win. But even when you go and you look at if you go like to YouTube and look up all these different basketball, like these highlights, when yeah. you get to schools that have legit 10 basketball players, they yep. don't press. They do not press. Straight schools, up honesty. Press. Like, I'm a, this is what I'm going to say. If I look at the point guard and he's like, really just a football player, but he's just playing on the team, I'm going to say, and you're like a basketball player, Yeah, I'm going to say, Ethan, go press him. Like, Don't try to steal with, the ball every time. Just rattle hang him around with the him. Ball. Rattle him with the ball. You know, and you looking back. He and loves got, to dribble on his right, got, cross you know him over on his yeah, left. Yeah, you looking at they, they small forward and he's a triple jumper for the track team and all that. You know, yeah, when he get the ball right here, I want y'all to just swarm him and make him panic and just throw it and anywhere. Just, he's, is he right-handed? Okay, yeah, we're right. going to sit on his right hip and you're going to force him on the left one. Yeah, that's just what it is, but like in a professional game, pressing is a – you can, like I said, you can show it. But, you you know, usually you only see man. Like, Always it's hard man. to even run zone in, in a West Man. No, West. and what, what zone worked the one time with the Dallas Mavericks because it it was in the finals and then all of a sudden everyone tried to keep doing it in the NBA for a few years and then it, everyone figured it out the very fast. Uh, it was against the Miami Heat. Okay. The only yeah. reason it worked is because – and Mark Cuban felt all high praise about it because LeBron James kept shooting bad threes. But then the next year, Ray Allen joins the team, and then they get a Brian. It's all good. Yeah, it's just that's the thing about it. He was like, like, it worked because the team don't have didn't have shooters. The Miami Heat didn't have no shooters. And then everyone kept trying to try that zone on LeBron James, like the Indiana Pacers did in the finals the next year, the Eastern Conference Finals, or throughout the regular season the year the next year prior. And LeBron James and then just kept breaking it afterwards because they figured it out too. Like you said, yeah. and they're like, "Why am I shooting? Just fucking, just hesitate and just take it in and ground everyone because yeah. there's no support in the middle. You can't hang out in the middle. It has to be yeah, if it's a three-two zone in the NBA, you can't hang out in the key in the high in high school. It can work in college. It can't because if you have that big guy standing there because of Shaq, they don't want that anymore. So you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't. And anyways, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah. Um. I think definitely the Lightning are going to be eating their, not eating their lunch, but getting a little upset on the way back um, about missing those five free throws. Yeah. Six-point game, yeah. five free Six throws. Free throws. No, that was That's not including the whole game. How many? Yeah. That was just five in the last two minutes. Anyways, but that's rather here nor there because you can't hang on those too much. you got to execute when it matters, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, but I mean, it happens. You know, I mean, even though they defend the jumps, like, people could have had first game jitters there as well, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. So it's just so many. And the Lightning are on a, a way stretch for up until this Sunday, right? Sunday's their home opener, the 26th. Yeah, so that'd be, that'd be okay. But, anyways, the Windsor Express beat the Kitchener Waterloo Titans 116 98. It was a good game. I didn't get to catch it, unfortunately. Yeah. What I was watching a bit of and I was impressed with was the St. John's Edge, their inaugural season opener. They played the Island Storm. Carl English made his debut. He played very well. They won 97-96. It was a tight one. Good for them. They got their first win. They played again today. They lost 121-124. What I've been seeing on the NBL fan page so far, Elvin, is a lot of fans are excited 
about even though they lost today, they're still excited about how competitive this team is, and that's no. a sign of the league, isn't it? Like, no, that's no. what I've been. Saying. That's what I'm wondering. No. I see people out saying it. No, really, it's not a sign of the league. It's just organization, right? Like you can't have a team that says, you know what, I'm competitive, and it speaks for every team. You know, um, it's, I mean, that's a good sign for them. I mean, on their, you know, in their first year in the league and their first two games being back to back, and they split. Like, you know, they won the first one on the road. You know, mm-hmm. they beat um they beat um P E I and P E I, right? Storm, so they yeah. beat the Island Storms right there. So, you know, it's that's then you go in, you take one on the road. Did they play another one on the road? I think it was two road games, wasn't it? I believe so. I Okay, helped. so yeah. I mean, like we said, two road games, you go fifty percent on the road, now you try to go back home and take your home. You get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. it's just one And the Hurricanes thing. went to the finals last year, right? Yeah, Halifax. Yeah, they mm-hmm. went to the they went to the finals against London both years, right? Last year they lost. The year before that they won, right? So it's like it's not like they lost a a garbage a, a trashy no. team or nothing like that. That was a test, and you only lose by what four, one twenty four, one. I mean three, three. one twenty one twenty one possession game. But what was crazy is like I was um I spoke to you know somebody that works within the league, and I was saying when I was in the CBA, like we had this thing called a quarter point system. And um, what it was is you get a point for every quarter and four points for the game. Well, no, nah, yeah, you get a point for a quarter and then three for the game, so it's a total of seven points. So seven points so, for a whole game. So what happens is you had your regular score and then you had a quarter point score. So let's say you come out and you jump up by 20 on the end of the first mm-hmm. quarter, right? The score is still 20 or you're up 20, where it'd be, you know, 50 to 30, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then the quarter points start over so you won that first quarter technically come, it's zero out, zero I can, yeah i can come out and i can win that second quarter by a point that third quarter by a point let's say you still fourth quarter yeah. by a point and still lose and by I, I still 15 lose, but i still get three points out of that game you only get four and that's how they like do it like seriously every quarter of every game was so competitive dude because that, i like that i i remember you explaining that earlier every in the quarter summer. like it you know you come in and and you be like man why is this team playing so hard they down 40 and you're just like nah they're getting them they say you know what we might you lose the to. game but let's get these three points let's get these and it's three a good way points. of kind of giving every quarter uh like a blank slate like oh well it's a new game kind of thing yeah. right it's like it's like it was really like he was playing four 12 minute games you know, but not a bad idea but it, either. But it was like you didn't see, like you didn't come in and it was, you know, like mid second actually. quarter and a team down by twenty, or you come in and it's mid third, the team down by twenty. Because then you just, just go, okay, there's seven minutes left. Yeah, you yeah, know what? We can go there by twenty. Yeah, and they just loafing around and just like, oh, I just they might make a push, but it's with. not going to be that. Com- yeah. You'll see. And that's what they base the playoffs. They're going to put the bench in. So what happened is even the team that's up twenty is still going hard because they're not trying to lose. They're not trying to. You're not trying to be up twenty and come out of the game with only four points. That's only saying I want the game in that first quarter you know what i'm saying and that's it you know you're still trying to pick up the mother three you're trying to mm-hmm. get like a seven oh really you know and that's like it just raised the competitiveness of it i like that a lot actually i think that's an interesting concept like it keeps everything fresh keeps everything competitive but yeah um once again i'm excited for this whole season i'm excited for the st john's edge because you know, they're an expansion team. They got a lot of work ahead of them. You know, it's going to be interesting. But, yeah, um, we're going to wrap it up around there, Elvin. I think we've got to get some sponsors out of the way first. I think there's one sponsor that needs to be said. One sponsor that is better than most. One sponsor. That's pretty neat. So there's this guy, Elvin. The one and only. There's this one guy one I know. One Carenza. I see him at Cherry Hill. This one guy I know. He's a cool guy, you know. This one guy. <laughs> um he cuts hair at the Cherry Hill Mall. Uh you can get you can text him at five one nine seven one nine five seven two one for all your haircut needs. You can also Make sure you have to wait in line because one's a busy one. All right, I'm stopping with those. It's snowing out, Elvin. I don't want to shovel my driveway. I don't want to do it. Let the snow build up on it, man. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, build, a, I'll build a cool yeah, fort. Just slide into the neighbor's driveway. <laughs> yeah, it'll be nature's problem. Oh, man. That's it. It'll be nature's problem. 
So here's what you got to do anyways. In the meantime, Elvin, you don't want to deal with these people. You got to call my brother. You got to call him at 519-532-0076. That's the guy you want to talk to. You want to talk to Seth. He'll put you in good hands. He'll clean you up nice like. Anyways, Elvin, where can people find us? You can find us on... Our Facebook page, the Ethan and Elvin show. No, 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 wait, no, no, it's Ethan and Elvin. Ethan with one E, Elvin with one E. No, just, I mean, let them, let them, a little trial and error, man. <laughs> a little trial and error. Put in two E's, man. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, you can find us there. Um, also, you can look us up on, um, then we have um, an Instagram account as well. We got Instagram. Same. We Ethan got Elvin. iTunes. Um, all this, all this, say Ethan and Elvin show. Yeah. Check us out on the air. Like us, subscribe us. There's some uh, other interesting news coming down the pipeline as well. Going to keep you posted via Facebook as well. It's going to be good. Hopefully Thursday with a special guest. Right, Elvin? Yeah. But anyways, everybody have themselves a wonderful day. Uh, I had to get one more. And... You know, in Augusta, Georgia, I like to shine shoes. On the steps of radio station WRDW. I think we started three cents, and we went to five, six, never did get to a dime. But today, I own that radio station. It was all this game. I used to read the source and slay. Said that my rhymes lost a couple grand. Y'all thinking of a master plan to make loot. Call up Eric B, give him, pay them full too. Um, I'm Denzel with them two guns drill. Shoot, my book of rhymes is pinned by Sun Tzu. The money on my mind, my lady attend to. But I continue picking up dimes, it's desperate times. Man, I feel like Poseidon, I've been riding the way. Saying what I gotta say to get my brothers paid. Uh, hey, the king always rode with the bishop. They know the rap game is very religious It's God is my witness My brothers keep killing it Y'all keep feeling it Chris Stout spilling it Two years ago A friend of mine Told me Alize and Chris Dow blows your mind Hey, 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 hey Show me the money Hey, 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 hey Show me the money Hey, 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 hey Show me the money I'm on my Cuban good and did it When that shit I wouldn't Hey, uh. hey, hey, hey Show me the money Hey, 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 hey Show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money I'm on my Cuban good and did it when I said I wouldn't uh. I came bent off the champagne Later on, I'll tell you my real name But for now, it's Kip for short Kill it for short, the dress is too short You nasty like too short No, I'm a hustler, yeah, I always eat good New house in the woods, new shoe on my foot Who running the game? I'm thinking I could She said to hit her up, I'm thinking maybe I should now y'all wanna be pop icons on your dot com Stuntin' like you pop down and livin' with your pop smile You are not a rapper just because you put a mic on Like you are not a blogger just because you bought an icon I hate to crush your dreams, but it all ain't what it seems The people highest up got the lowest self-esteem The prettiest people do the ugliest things On the roads to riches and diamond rings Hey, 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 show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when they said I wouldn't. Uh, hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when they said I wouldn't. Uh, I came home, got the Chevy, couldn't grab a roast. All the ends I know, turn up they nose. He ain't that kid that we used to know. Studios and bungalows, I got them dreams you can't afford. These rappers sell they sell for a little taste of fame. I'm Sam Jackson switching lanes. Got the bogeys in the hood saying we feeling your mind. Young kid, that's a lil name. Michael Barris, the government. Rapper ladies, a covenant place. Nothing above that shit. Change because I wanted it. Changes for the better. KIV for vendetta. Leave a hole up in your sweater. Another black boy, get up. I swear this is a setup. The system won't let up. Y'all, the system won't let up. All the J's give us a heads up. We possession rolling, holding the block that our stars like my boy Lamar Odom. The man's feeding us poison. No voices, no choices. The blacks get exploited for all y'all enjoyment. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when it's done. Uh.